Hey everyone, welcome to part 31 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video we will implement trainers. So this is a trainer over here. And if I step in front of the trainer, you can see that the trainer will walk towards me and challenge me for a battle. So let's look at how to implement this. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So let's start the video. So first let's create a game object for the trainer. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate our NPC game object and I'll rename it to trainer. I'll change its exposition to something like 3.5, actually minus 3.5. So it's over here. And you can change the sprites in the character animator if you want, but I'm just going to use the same sprite of that of NPC. And the main difference between NPC and trainer will be the controller script. Okay, so let's just remove this NPC controller script. And instead of that, Inside my scripts folder, inside character, I'll create another script called trainer controller. Okay, and let's just assign it to our trainer game object. Okay, so the only difference between the player, NPC, and trainer is that they have different controller scripts. So this is the best thing about writing your code as modular components. It will allow you to reuse most of your code. And here you can see that we only had to switch just one script. All right. So I'll do the implementation of the script later. So now when the player steps in front of the trainer, we should be able to detect that. And we should make the trainer challenge the player for a battle, right? So to detect if the player is in trainer's view, under the trainer, I'll create another game object called FOV, which stands for field of view. Okay. So to this, I'll add a box collider 2D. Okay. And we need to change the size of the box. So I'll change the Y size to four. All right. And let me just change the Y offset so that the field of view is in front of the player. Okay, like that. And I'll also change the X size to something like 0.6 so that it's much smaller. So since the Y size is 4, it means the trainer should be able to see up to 4 tiles. Right? So you can make this 5 or 6 if you want to increase the number of tiles which the trainer can see. But I'll just stick with 4. So next I'll tick the is trigger checkbox. So this will make it a trigger instead of a collider and it won't check for collisions. And finally we need to change the layer of our FOV. So right now it's in the interactable layer. So I'll add a new layer called FOV layer. And I'll assign the FOV to the FOV layer. Okay, so whenever we add a new layer, we also have to add it to our game layer script, right? So let's do that. In our game layer script, I'll add a new variable called FOV layer. And I'll also create a property to expose it. Okay, so next let's assign the FOV layer in the inspector. Alright, so now we have a field of view for the trainer, which will allow us to detect when the player steps in front of the trainer, right? So now every time the player moves to a different tile, we should check if he's in the trainer's view, right? So for that, let's open up our player controller script. And right now when the player moves to a different tile, we are calling the check for encounters function which will check if the player is on grass and start a battle with 
the wild Pokemon randomly, right? But now we also need to check if the player is in the trainer's view. So I'll create another function for that. So in this function, just like we do in our check encounters, we need to create an overlap circle in the player's current position, right? So let me just copy this line and paste it over here. And one difference is instead of checking for the grass layer, we should check for the FOB layer, right? So this overlap circle will detect if the player is on trainer's field of view, right? And if that's the case, I'll just print in trainer's view just to test this. All right, so now we also need to call this function at the end of every move function, right? So for that, what I'll do is I'll create a different function called on move over. And in this function, first I'll call check for encounters. And then I'll call check if in trainers view. Okay. So now in the move function, instead of passing check for encounters, I'll pass the new function that we created. All right. So let's test if this is working. So if I go step in front of the NPC, you can see that in trainers view has been printed over here. So next, instead of just printing this, we should actually make the trainer challenge the player for a battle, right? So for that, first I'll show an exclamation point on top of the trainer's head, and then I'll make the trainer walk towards the player. Okay, so I have a sprite for the exclamation point. So here in the object sprite sheet, as you can see that we have a sprite for that. So let's break down the sprite sheet. So I'll change the sprite mode to multiple. Make sure the pixel per unit is 16. Filter mode is point no filter. And I'll hit apply. So next I'll go to the sprite editor. And I'll slice the sprite sheet automatically. So this might take some time since the sprite sheet is big. But once it's done, you can see that all the sprites will be separated. So this is the sprite that we want. So I'll just rename it to exclamation. Just to make it easy to find. And finally, I'll hit apply. Okay. So let me just close this. And under the trainer, I'll create a 2D sprite. Let me name this exclamation and for the layer I'll just put it in the default layer and for the sprite of this I'll choose our exclamation sprite okay so let me just increase its Y position so that it appears on top of the trainer but you can see that it's not visible right now so I'll change the sorting layer to foreground and now it should be visible so by default, I'll just disable this game object. We only want to show this when the player enters the view, right? So let's implement all that inside our trainer controller script. So let me open my trainer controller script. So inside the script, first I need a reference to the exclamation game object. So let me create that. So next I'll create a function called trigger trainer battle. Okay, I want this to be a public function. And inside this function, first I'll make the exclamation game object active. And then I'll wait for half a second. So in order to make it wait, we should make this function a coroutine. Okay, and after waiting for half a second, I'll just disable the exclamation. So let me set set active to false. All right. So what we're doing with these three lines is we are just showing the exclamation sprite for 0.5 seconds. So after that, 
we need to make the trainer walk towards the player right so we can do that by character.move function so first let me grab a reference to the character script okay and then we can just call character.move in order to make the character walk towards the player right but we have to pass a move vector so how can we find this move vector so let's say the player is in this position then the trainer should walk to the tile right next to that right the trainer should walk here it should not walk on top of player so our move vector should be from here to here right so to find that first i'll find the difference vector between the trainers and the players position so to get the players position i'll just take a reference to the player controller as the parameter and then we need to find the difference vector right so i'll say diff equal to player dot transform dot position minus transform dot position so this is a difference vector between the trainer's position and the player's position right but if we use this vector as the move vector then the trainer will walk onto the tile on which the player is standing right but we don't want that we want to walk to the tile right next to the player so for that we just have to subtract one tile from our difference vector okay so how can we do that so to subtract one tile i'll subtract our diff vector by diff dot normalized okay i've explained about vector normalization in the previous video so watch that if you don't know what this is and i'll just store this in a variable called move vector and we can just pass the move vector to our character dot move function right so since this is a coroutine i'll use yield return so this will work but i want to do one more thing to avoid some problems in the future so since we are working with tiles here i want the length of different vector to be integer right it should be the number of tiles three tiles or four tiles i don't want a decimal value like 3.5 or 3.3 .3 or something like that so what i'll do is i'll round the x and y values of my move vector so we can use mathf dot round for that okay so let me also round the y value so now the x and y value of move vector will always be an integer so now we are showing the exclamation and then we are making the trainer walk towards the player and finally after that the trainer should say some dialogue before actually starting the battle right so what i'll do is here i'll create a variable to store the dialogue and here i'll just call dialog manager dot instance dot show dialog okay so for the dialog i'll just pass our dialog variable and we can also pass an on finished action so i'll just pass a lambda for that and once the dialog is finished we should start the battle right we should start the trainer battle so we'll be implementing that in the next video but for now let me just do a debug dot log and just print something like starting trainer battle so next we need to actually call this function when the player is in the trainer's view right so inside the player controller when the player is inside trainer's view we can directly call this function but the problem is we'll have to reference the trainer controller inside the player controller right 
so to avoid that what i'll do is i'll create i'll use the observer pattern just like we did for triggering battle with wild pokemon so i'll create an event called on enter trainers view so down here we can simply invoke that event so next we can actually subscribe to this event from our game controller script so in here i'll subscribe to player controller dot on enter trainers view and i'll just use the lambda function so now whenever this event is fired we will call this lambda function right and inside this lambda function we can call the trigger trainer battle function of the trainer right but we need reference to the trainer we need to know which trainer it is right so for that while calling the event here we can also pass the collider that is returned by the overlap circle right this overlap circle actually returns a collider 2d which will be the collider of the trainers field of view so we can use that collider to find out which trainer it is so let me store this in a variable called collider and here i'll check if collider is not equal to null and then we need to pass it as a parameter to this event right so while defining this event to the action i'll also add a collider 2d as the parameter okay so now we can pass our collider so now in our game controller script this lambda should also take a collider 2d as the parameter so i'll call this trainer collider and now we can use this collider to get reference to the trainer controller right so i'll say trainer collider dot get component of trainer controller okay and i'll store it in a variable called trainer but there will be a problem with this get component won't work like we expect so the reason for that is the collider for the fov is not in the trainer game object right it's in a child game object called fov so here we can't directly use get component so instead of that we should use get component in parent okay so now we won't have any problem so next i'll just make sure that the trainer is not null just to be safe here and then i'll call trainer dot trigger trainer battle okay so we have to pass a reference of player controller to it and since this is a coroutine i'll just put it inside a start coroutine function so now let's go to unity and test all this so first we need to have assign values to our trainer controller script so with the exclamation i'll just drag our exclamation game object and for the dialog i'll just put some sample dialog okay so now let's test the game okay so if i walk in front of the trainer as you can see that we showed the exclamation and the trainer walked towards us but there's a problem we are not actually showing the dialogue so let's check what is the issue okay so here's the issue show dialogue is actually a coroutine right so we should actually put it inside a start coroutine function right so let me do that and now it should work properly okay let me try walking onto the trainer's view 
and yeah you can see that we are showing the dialog and once the dialog is over we are printing starting trainer battle all right so everything is working as we want but this is actually a problem let me show you so when the trainer is walking towards me i can actually move right so this is something that we need to fix we should not allow the player to move in that case right so let's go to our game controller script so here what we can do is when the trainer is walking towards the player we can actually set the game state to some other state other than free roam right so i'll create a new state called cutscene for that since it's like a cutscene when the player when the trainer walked towards the player and in here before calling the trigger trainer battle function i'll set the game state to cutscene okay now the player shouldn't be able to move so let's test that all right you can see that the player is not able to move but we are playing the animation so to fix that inside the player controller you can see that when we are triggering the battle with wild pokemon we are actually setting the is moving parameter to false right so let's also do that before triggering the trainer battle right so let's test that now okay so now you can see that i'm not able to move so that issue is solved so next what if i want my trainer to face in a different direction so let's say i want my trainer to face right so i'll change the sprite to the facing right sprite which is npc4 so now he's facing right but when you play the game you can see that he's still facing down right so why is this happening it's because the sprite shown here is actually decided by our character animator component right and if you look at the character animator you can see that we are setting the default animation to walk down animation right so the default direction will always be facing down so this is a problem that we will also have with our npcs so let's fix that so inside the character animator I'll create an enum called facing direction and we can have directions up, down, left and right and let me create a variable of it so that we can set it from the inspector. I'll call the variable default direction and i'll give it a default value of facing direction dot down okay so now let's create a function that will set the move x and move y value based on the default direction right so below the update i'll create another function called set facing direction And this function will take a facing direction as the parameter so the reason why i'm making it public and taking the direction as a parameter is because in the future we can reuse this function from outside this class okay so now we have to set the move x and move y based on the direction right so if direction is equal to facing direction dot right then we can set move x to 1 right else if it is equal to left then I'll set it to minus 1 okay and otherwise if it's down then I'll set move y to minus 1 and finally if it's up 
then I'll set mobile to one. Okay, so now in the start function, while initializing everything, we can just call set facing direction and just pass the default direction. All right. So let's go to Unity and set the direction. So let me find the character animator. And you can see that we have default direction over here. And I want the trainer to face right. So I'll change direction to right. Okay, so let's test this. And now you can see that the trainer is facing right just like we wanted to. But now there is another problem. If you enable the gizmos, you can see that even though the trainer is facing right, the field of view is still down, right? So if I walk through here, the trainer doesn't challenge me for battle. But if I stand here, you can see that the trainer attacks me. So we should also rotate the field of view based on the trainer's default direction. Okay. So to rotate the field of view, we can just rotate the FOB game object. And whenever we rotate something in 2D, we will always rotate it along the Z axis, right? So if I change my Z to 90, you can see that the FOB is now rotated to the right direction. And if I change it to 180, it's actually in the up direction right and if I change it to 270 it will be facing left so I'll just change it back to 0 and we'll actually set it based on the default direction of the trainer right so in our trainer controller script first we need a reference to the FOV game object so let me create that And then I'll create a function called set FOV rotation. And this function will take facing direction as the argument. Okay, and now we can set the Z rotation based on the direction, right? So I'll create a variable called angle and set it to zero by default. And if the direction is equal to right then I'll set the angle to 90 all right otherwise if it's up then I'll set the angle to 180 and finally if it's left then I'll set the angle to 270 Okay, we don't have to check for down direction since the angle is zero by default and that's actually the angle of the down direction, right? So we don't have to check for that. Okay, so now we have to set this angle as the Z rotation of the FOB game object, right? So to set the rotation, if you look inside FOV.transform, you can see that we have a variable called rotation but this is actually a quaternion right it's not a vector like our position property so if you want to set the rotation as a vector then you can use the Euler angle property okay and I'll set it to new vector of 0 comma 0 and for Z, we'll pass the angle. So this property is used to set the rotation as a vector. And we are actually changing the Z rotation to the angle that we want. All right. So let's actually call this function now. So I'll call this inside the start function. Okay, so I'll call set FOV rotation. And how can we get the direction? We already have a reference to the character, so I can say character dot 
animator and get the default direction but the default direction is actually a private variable so we have to expose it by using a property so let me do that okay so now we can use this property to get the default direction from our trainer controller all right so let's test if this is working oops we forgot to assign the fov so let me go to my trainer controller script and i'll assign the fov game object okay let's test it now all right so you can see that now the fov has been rotated according to the trainer's direction so i can walk through here and you can see that the trainer doesn't see me but if I walk over here you can see that trainer sees me and he challenges me for a battle so we can also try setting a different direction so let me set the default direction to left and now if I test the game you can see that the FOV also has been rotated properly and yeah everything is working fine so next after showing this dialog we should actually start the trainer battle right so I'll do that in the next video and I'll stop the video here so if you think this video is helpful please make sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so I'll see you in the next video